Pleasant evening to you and you too, Bland. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of John in the third chapter. We'll begin there in just a moment. We're delighted we have this opportunity to study from the pages of God's inspired word. In the book of John and the third chapter, look with me at verse 13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man, who is in heaven. You know, when you study your Bible, you'll find that the Word of God is definitive. It has absolute truth and definitive standards. You know, there are a lot of people in our day and time who believe in what we identify as postmodernism, and they say all truth is relative. But when you study the Bible, the Word of God, you'll find that truth is absolute that there are concrete instances and concrete truths that one must follow. So in our study at this time, I want us to look at a phrase that is used time and time again by the Bible in the book of John, and that is the phrase, no one. Time would not permit us to look at all because there are many, but let us notice several of the times where Jesus or someone says no one, and that is an important statement because when Jesus makes this statement, it removes all doubt, eliminates all questions, and produces absolute truth. In the verse I just read in your hearing in verse 13, notice that Jesus said, No one has ascended to the Father but the Son of Man. He said the only one to ascend to heaven is the one who came down from heaven. That is the Christ. And no one can enter into heaven with Christ apart from doing the will of Christ. One must be born again, as he stated earlier in the book of John and the third chapter in verse 3. One must put on Christ. One must be baptized into Christ to have his sins forgiven so that he can walk in the will of the Father. Only those in Christ will ascend to be with God. But then if you take your Bible, turn with me to the book of John and the sixth chapter. And when you come to the book of John and the sixth chapter, we see a second time where the word no one is used in verse 44. In verse 44, he said, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. Now notice at this time, this is a picture of earlier in this chapter where Jesus identifies himself as the bread of life coming down. That goes back to what we just said in John 3, 13. He came down, and he came to draw men. And this is by the gracious offer that God has given. God sent his son. Had he not sent his son to die on Calvary's cross, then I'll use the phrase again, no one would be saved. But notice in your Bible that here Jesus came to seek and to save the lost and to die. Look at what he says in John 6, 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. What a contrast. No one to what he says in verse 37, the one, the one who comes to me. He will be saved. He will be redeemed. And so when I take my Bible and think about the fact that I need to come to Jesus, I'm mindful of many passages. I'm mindful of Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, where Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And time and time again, as you study, even throughout the gospel account of John, he says, No one, unless they come to me, will be saved. But then I want you to think of something else. Take your Bible and look in the book of John and the 14th chapter. And when you come to the book of John and the 14th chapter, notice, if you will kindly, a statement made in verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, I've observed three times thus far where Jesus said, no one. And notice at this time, he said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Here again, we see how closely the Father and Son are united together. You remember in your Bible earlier, John, or later, John it talks about Philip's question to the Lord, where he said in verse 8, Lord, show us the Father, and it's sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you've not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. That, my friend, shows how closely united Father, Son, and Spirit is. 
But notice a statement again. When you look back to what Jesus said in verse 9, there's absolutely no other way to God except through Jesus Christ. Only through Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, can we go to heaven. There's no bypass by Jesus. You cannot get to the Father except through Christ. You cannot get to heaven unless you go through Christ. That's why when you read the first five verses, he talks about he's gone to prepare a place. And we have joy in that because we are in Christ. But if you're in not in Christ, my friend, you have no hope. Oh, if there's another way, pray, tell me what it is. Because Jesus said in John 14, 9, no one comes to me. No one comes to the Father except through me. But that brings up something else. Go back to the book of John and the 10th chapter. And when you come to the book of John and the 10th chapter, look at a statement that is made this time by Jesus and observe carefully what he says in verse 18. And he's talking about his life. Go back to verse 17 to get the context. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Now watch it. No one, underscore that, takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself for I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I've received from my Father. Now you think about that statement. Jesus said, no one takes my life. I give it. You know, you can think about the Roman scourge cracking across the back of the Son of God. You can hear the nails as they pound through his flesh into the wood. And it appears that man is taking the life of Jesus. But that is what it appears. It's not the truth. Because he said, I give my life. He gave his life as a sacrifice. Sacrifice implies a giving up. In this case, Christ is giving up his body and life to be crucified for our sin. Man could never have done this had Jesus not offered it freely. And no one had the power to take God's life. He willfully and willingly gave it to atone for the sins of man. When I look at that statement, I think about the power of Jesus, and I realize no one could take his life unless he willfully gave it. Oh, I tell you, I think that's a powerful teaching from the Word of God. Jesus said no one takes it. No one could take it. He gave it. But then if you take your Bible, look, if you will, again in the book of John and the 16th chapter. In John 16, notice, if you will, verse 22. In John 16 and verse 22, Jesus teaches a very powerful statement. When he says, therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy, now watch it, no one will take from you. Now look at that statement, no one. Now, Jesus had told him he'd be crucified. He told him he would die on the cross. He told him you would mourn for this. But then he says, I'll be raised again. And he declares they'll see him again. And he said, no one will take away your joy because I defeated death. You will defeat death as well. He said, therefore, Matthew 6, lay up your treasure in heaven where no one can steal it. He says, that is what gives us peace. In Philippians 4, 7, he talks about the peace we have. Why do we have peace? Because we are in Christ, and no one can steal our joy because of the hope we have of eternal life. You ever thought about, my friend, the only one who can separate us from God is if we allow ourselves to be separated by our sins and iniquity. So let's take that and make three or four applications. Number one, we need to be drawn by the cross and grace of Christ lest we be lost. Secondly, unless we come to Christ, we'll never see the Father. There's no other way except through Jesus that we can be redeemed. Third, Christ gave his life for us. We need to give our life for him. And I'll tell you one thing that's very powerful. We have joy because we're children of God. And if you're not a child of God, you're missing out on great joy. These are absolute truths that we can mark down. No one will steal our jewel if we're faithful to Christ. I want to thank you for studying with me this evening.